we can pass through pain, our life is going to be better. So if you have a dream, go get it. Go get it. We are here on a Sunday afternoon, very rainy, very gloomy, but it is time for another interview. My name is Mamba from Boycott Magazine, and today we are here with Alonzo Ray. Alonzo Ray is a contemporary artist. He does all types of media, such as acrylic, watercolor, watercolor pencil, and oil. And he has invited us into his studio. So the first question is, how's life been treating you lately, Alonzo? Well, life is pretty good so far. Um, it's a lot of Life is hard, life is a lot of work, but um, they have the, the rewards. For me, it's a, I can paint, so I can, I can complain. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a complainer, basically. Okay, um, in your bio, you um, said your inspiration from art comes from a reflection of your life and your actions. Uh, with that being said, what was life like in Peru? Well, I grew up uh, in a middle class, um, in a middle class uh, 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 type of family. My father was a doctor, my mom was an artist. Uh, it's not like doctors here in America. In Peru, doctors have not normal life. <laughs> you know, it's not like you're rich, you have a lot of power. Especially my dad, because my dad uh, has the philosophy to help poor, poor people. So where I grew up is see a man, <clears throat> like have two jobs apart, <clears throat> apart of, her, of his own profession. And, 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 and provide with these two jobs and, and, him, and like that he can, he can, his real profession as a doctor, he can help people. So what I see is a guy like he helping a lot of people for no money, you know? And so it's totally different in the concept about doctor, between doctors here and how I grew up. And, uh, and also my mom, my mom, she's a full talent person, like she, she do wedding dresses, she design wedding dresses, she, she's a painter, she, she's an artist, but she never take as a profession. Uh, she always take it just as a hobby. But definitely that's when I click since I five years old, I, this is where I remember like, I remember all this book about classic books, about, cla uh, about masters, you know, Goya, Caravaggio, Raphael, Botticelli, and, and, and I love them. I love all of them, and every time I have, I say, I always ask, ask myself, what am I going to do? So when I, when I remember, I go and grab those books and fascinate myself with, with the pictures, you know? I, um, I realized <laughs> real later on here, like, like as a, as a cat, um, I, I, I was named as a as a distracted kid, like kid like never pay attention. Well, here, uh, that name it ADD. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, I'm very visual person, so those books that was just pictures. So everything like these pictures, I can be for hours, you know. So that was that's my memory. See my my painting. Give me colors, give me crayons, give me watercolors in in, in, in painting too, you know. And then uh, I uh, and then I I I want to be a, a, a I, I I want to be a pilot, <laughs> a pilot in the arm in the in the in the air force in Peru. They believe like like 
they always say, oh, you're going to be a pilot because every time you see an airplane, you run outside to see the airplane. And I love the airplane, they fascinate me. But after, after I went to a military school, my three last years from my high school, I went to a military school. I don't like it, I said, this is not for me. So what's supposed to be my hobby, I was thinking I'm going to be a pilot and my hobby is going to be an artist. I say, no, I want to be an artist now. So my mom get really mad because my mom was more like a, a little bit materialistic in that way, you know, like, oh, I married your dad, so your dad provides and it's fine, you know, this is a hobby, but you as an artist, nobody's going to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? And uh, my mom was about kind of like that, you know, so, so it's, I tried something similar, no, no fine arts, you know, I tried like graphic design. At that time, years ago, was drawing design. You do everything by hand. This, uh, you use this little pencil with numbers, rotting all, all point one, all point. I don't, and, and also, I don't like the idea, like somebody give me their idea to create something. That made me crazy. I don't really like like somebody say, okay, you need to do this. You know, work as a group for some project, that'd be cool. But all the time, that was no fun. So I went to three different graphic design schools in Peru, thinking like, what's the school the problem? But the problem was, was me. Like, I, I, I never, I never, I'm not very good to follow the structure. I like, follow my instinct. So, so my sister, she's a, she's a journalist, she, she, she said, she suggests, why you not go to, to Escuela de Bellas Artes, like fine art school, check it out. And I went over there and immediately I get in the school, I, I, I feel a good vibe. The school is old, very old, like Spanish style with arch with the sculptures of copies of the original, of the master, like I saw in my books. So I really like it. <clears throat> and then I saw a guy painting in one of the, the rooms. And I asked the guy, what happened if you made a mistake? What happened if you, something get wrong? Because in graphic design, and at that time drawing design, you make some mistake, you need to repeat the whole page. You need to do a, a another work, he laughed and said, this is a painting, you can scratch it, you can, you can touch it, you can, you can repaint the whole thing, you can do whatever you want, this is yours. And I really like that. I, and that's when I get in fine art school. And, and then when I was in the school, um, when I was in the school, uh, uh, and in my third year, I get sick, I, get, I lose my kidneys. And, um, and uh, that was also part of the whole thing, was also like, that was too much party. <laughs> so, part to be a Bohemian, I thought, I thought like part to be a Bohemian was like, you know, the party thing, you know? And, uh, and I realized like I was a knight. So that was very hard to get out from something that was another illness on top of my of my kidney. So that was pretty rough life, but I never stopped painting. Actually I had paintings about that time, dialysis painting. When I was in dialysis, when I get my kidney. So after two years in dialysis and figured out spirituality it's spiritualistic what I'm going to do with myself um, I um, I uh, 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 finally I, 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 I get clean I get clean and, 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 and start miracles start happening you know and miracles like I remember after three months like my first three months in 12 years like I was party, um, I get my kidney. I get, somebody comes in from the hospital and say, we have a kidney for you. 
me making a transplant and uh, and uh, and after I get my kidney transplant, when I get up from the hospital, I realized like I recognized like I was an addict, and I need to understand my illness. So I went to a rehab for nine months. And that nine months changed totally my life. So I back I back to to society with all the tools. To deal because life is a jungle. <laughs> Nobody cares about you. You know, everybody. It's, 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 it is what it is. Life is hard. People is pushing. It's something surviving. You know, Not, no, nobody's going to change because you change. You change for you. You know, change for the people. So that was awesome. You know, like I have like a totally new life. You know, I have a new kidney. I have. I start with clean time, and I moved here to America. So here in America, in the last 17 years, I know I never do drugs and nothing like that. I just focus to be an artist, right. and this is what I did. Um, speaking of being an artist, you studied a lot of grandmasters, and you spoke about that how you were always wanting to do your own thing, you know. So, was there any particular grandmaster that really stuck out to you? or that really impressed you during your studies? This, the master like I really like is, 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 is Caravaggio and, uh, and Goya. Because everybody, all of them have their own technique, they have their own different inspiration, but I like the visceral part of those guys. <laughs> because my life never was an easy life. I always, it's always a lot of, a lot of crazy things happening in my life. So when I see the, the, the when I see the heart, the, 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 the visceral part of, of life, I don't need to get there again. You know, like now it's like by putting in the canvas, it's. I take it off of my soul and put it in the canvas, and I live more happy. You know, sometimes people say, this guy, he masturbates with these paintings. Why is he painting these dark paintings? Why so many paint? <laughs> what I do is take it out for myself. That's because I, I can be more, I, 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 I'm more happy, I'm more, I don't need to go <laughs> to a psychiatric <laughs> to tell you all my craziness. I put it in the canvas. <laughs>